Hello and welcome to another video featuring fairy hug stamps from the fairy stamper store. In this video I'll show you how to make this little card and I'll show you my mistakes. Hopefully we can all learn from them. So um, this is actually a redo um, because I'll show you in the first one and you'll see in the video what happened. And what it turns out is, is that the um, that particular embossing um, powder is not it doesn't resist and so you can see I made a big boo-boo right there tried to fix it but I kind of tore the paper and it was because the VersFine Claire did not want to wipe off of that embossing powder it just didn't resist the way I expected it to so I did a do-over but I left my mistake in the video just so you guys can see you know that we're all human and we all make mistakes. This one, this do-over, I used a, uh, I used the Distress Ink instead. So what I used for the video was um, several different medium. I used the Spray Stain and Rusty Hinge, uh, crackle, Crackling Campfire, and Antique Linen, and of course Vintage Photo, which is my very, very favorite. I'm using the Versafine Claire in Chianti, Versamark ink. I've got this Simon Says Stamp sort of off-white embossing powder. I've got this stencil from my stash, and it's just a little word stencil. Then I've got the Holiday Word Tree from Fairy Hug Stamps. And I have got the Bunnies from Fairy Hug Stamps and a piece of watercolor paper. Later in the video, you'll see that I show some other things, too. I'll be using some blending brushes as well. And, of course, stamps and a stamping platform. This is my splat box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wet down the paper first because I want the um, sprays to kind of wick into it. And I'm going to start out with the antique photo and just do a squirt here and there. Do love this method and technique. I'm going to go in with my vintage photo, get the good majority of it with that one. And I'll go in with some of the crackling campfire, get a little bit of red going in there, and then finally the rusty hinge, which ends up, as far as I could tell, doesn't really show up that much. So I could have probably left that out, but I didn't, so there we go. Now what I need to do is I need to get this dry. Okay, now I've got it dried and I want to spread that ink around a little bit more. I'm not happy with the way it ran that way. So I'm just going to get it wet and then hit it with my dryer and dry it some more. I'm going to dry it till it's completely dry. And then I'll just dab off any excess. And what I do is once it's almost 100% dry, it's I'll usually send it through my mink machine to kind of flatten it out. But you don't have to. You can put a book on it or whatever you want but you do want to make sure that it's good and dry and you'll see so I'm pretty happy with the way that looks so um, let me go ahead and get out my mink machine and I'm gonna run it through on the highest setting to make sure it's good and dry if you see anything coming out of there it's just steam the paper does have a little bit of moisture to it but I wanted to make sure that it's nice and flat for the next step because I will be doing some stenciling. So I made this little magnetic board out of a piece of sheet metal that my husband had outside and I'm just gonna um, stick this stencil down with the magnet and I'm gonna grab another magnet just to make sure it's nice and flat and I'm gonna grab my Chianti ink and one of my little blending brushes and I'm just gonna blend in here and there not a big deal. Uh, I don't want it all over. I just want bits and pieces. So when I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and take off my magnets. And yeah, I like it just like that. It's just perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to trim it down. And so I'm going to go ahead and take it to my trimmer and I'm going to trim it to four by uh, five and a quarter so that I can have a little border space and um, 
you know, there you can get a better perspective on how the, those kind of stenciled words look on there. So let me get it nice and dry again um, because I'm going to be doing the next step, which is going to be doing some heat embossing. So I'm going to get out my stamping platform, and this one is a Misty, and I'm going to get my card comfortable in there <laughs> and throw a couple magnets down. I've got to go grab my magnet off of my other thing. I need more magnets, don't I? <laughs> just want to make sure that it stays put while I'm stamping because A, this is a brand new stamp and um, I want it to be perfectly clear. And so I'm grabbing the Christmas tree stamp and I'm going to grab the little black piece of acetate off of there and lay it on there where I want the uh, stamp to show up. And once I get it where I like it, I'm going to lay the stamp right on top of it. Do you ever have that when these things just move around on you? <laughs> you get them just where you want them and you touch it and boom, it moves. That's okay. It's a handmade card. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that and pull off the acetate. And then I'm going to get my um, embossing buddy and put this embossing powder um, prep stuff and I can't think of its name right now but you know what I'm talking about this thing <laughs> my embossing bag and just coat that entirely with that and then I'm going to get my uh, Versamark ink and I'll be inking up the tree in my Versamark and I'm going to do probably two or three times um, just to make sure that I've got a good impression And the thing is about this type of paper, this type of background, it's very hard to see the watermark. And I, I simply cannot see it. I just am hoping it's there. <laughs> uh, see, you can't really, really see it. And you, I mean, you, if you lift it to a certain kind of light, you could probably see it. But just to make sure, positive, sure, I'm going to do it one more time there. Give it good firm pressure on there, but not too hard because I don't want to smoosh the stamp. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off my stamping platform and just set that aside. Normally, I just do all this stuff right on top of each other, but since we're doing a video, I thought it'd be a little bit neater. <laughs> and so I'm going to pour on this kind of off-white Simon Says Stamp um, embossing powder and see... Uh, with my best efforts, it still wasn't completely dry. So I'm gonna find a brush here and I'm gonna brush off that excess the best I can without messing up my tree. I'm gonna need a little bit finer brush here. So bear with me while I hunt down my brush here. Yeah, there we go, that one will work. And I just wanna get that little excess off of there. And I don't get it all, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but I definitely don't want that much on there. And what it did was it stuck to my stenciling. Look for any other heavy spots, give it another couple thumps. Sometimes I can't tell the difference between the, um, the embossing buddy powder and the actual embossing powder with this particular color. Yeah, I've got a couple little spots here and there. But I just want it to be as neat as possible. And I'll be showing you, um, if you miss a spot, what you can do. Because you don't want to, you know, you can accidentally rub away the actual embossing powder. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. I think this would be pretty cool if you were to heat set it um, and do it, you know, stamp it multiple times and make a nice thick, thick, thick embossing. Particularly because, um, honestly, this embossing powder, although I like the color, I feel like it just doesn't give the coverage. It gets holy. <laughs> you can see right there where my S didn't quite come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix it. Um, what I have is I have uh, an embossing pen and I'm just going to kind of draw that little piece in best I can. 
and then I'll just throw pinch pinch a little bit of embossing powder over the top of it dump it off make a mess and clear out the excess and then just run my heat tool on that one spot works out just fine this is the cutest little stamp I love this stamp there we go okay so next up I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff out of my way here and I'm gonna grab the bunnies and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my stamping platform again and get my tree out of there my little piece of container acetate or one of those stamp pocket things get the Christmas tree stamp out of my way and then I'm gonna go ahead and just now this is a little warped now because I heat embossed it and you can't run it through the mink after that because you don't want to melt you know smoosh your embossing powder I'm gonna decide on my placement of my little bunnies and I'm not gonna bother with the whole acetate thing because they're so small it doesn't it doesn't really matter they're just gonna be looking up at the wondrous Christmas tree sentiment just gonna position them yeah that little guy wants to stick to my finger no matter what I do come on guy get off my finger <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> so go ahead and um, I'm gonna do those a couple times as well I have used these bunnies before so they're a little bit broken in but I'm gonna go ahead and use my embossing buddy again and grab my Versamark ink and lay it on the bunnies make sure I can see that they're fairly coated you can see them a little bit better on this background than you could see the um, cinnamon tree but still not that well <laughs> so I'm just gonna do it one more time for good measure and hope for the best A little bit of pressure pull this off set that up out of my way grab my embossing powder again and go ahead and lay that powder on the bunnies I got a little bit of excess but it's not bad considering it was still kind of wet but I still need to clear off those big chunks of excess And again, sometimes I can't tell the difference between that powder, um, protective powder stuff and the embossing powder itself. But I'll go ahead and get my heat tool and go ahead and emboss those down too. Y'all, why am I doing Christmas cards in September? <laughs> uh, because I got a list of about 100 or more that I'm going to send cards to this year. So... Might as well get a start on it and present a video at the same time. Now I'm just cooling that down so I can wipe off the excess embossing buddy powder. I've seen some people found some really cool tools uh, to do that with versus that little, little floppy bag, but um, I'll just live with my floppy bag. Now I need to ground everybody here and coming up is where you see I run into trouble but I'm gonna go ahead and just rip some paper to make my ground. Um, I do, I have some um, mask that I can do this with, but I, I, it's cool, I'd just rather use the paper for right now. Um, it's nice and thin, and so I wanna make sure my bunny is sitting on something, and um, I'm gonna take that, um, take a blending brush and take that Chianti ink again and I'm gonna go ahead and make a mess here. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and place my paper again and use my little blending tool. I'm just gonna start on the paper and work down. And you can see my little bunny's feet are pink and hey, I'm not worried about it because, you know, it's gonna resist. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's got pink feet. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I'm already in it, so I'm going to go with the next bunny and give him a little hill as well. And I realized later I forgot to ground the tree pot, too, so my do-over did come out better. And here you're going to see... And I want to get that in there nice and dark because I just think that color looks beautiful with the um, color combination that I did for the background. But I've got a pink pink bunny bottom, and so I'm going to try and clean it off. And I mean, it comes partially off, but the redness of the Chianti just stains him. And so I rub and rub until I actually rub the paper off. Okay, so moving right along. We'll figure that out later. Yeah, you want to be careful when you're rubbing on that that you don't rub off the paper. I mean, it still looks cute, but it's not, you know, no. Well, maybe I can cover it with an embellishment. Who knows? I am going to take a little tool here and just kind of fill in the bottom with the little, um, with ink and try and get as up close to it as I can. And then I've got a little makeup brush that I try and cover that bald spot that I created. Um, but I might as well go ahead and edge this while I'm here. Just And again, I love the, this color combination. It's just gorgeous. Is it Christmassy? No, not really, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a Dickens Christmas or something. I don't know. <laughs> It's a fairy hugs Christmas. And I like to grab the excess ink right off of my silicone mat. I don't like to waste any. And this stuff doesn't ink smush that well either, so wiping it up with the another piece of paper doesn't work out that great either. So let me grab this little tool here, which is just, again, I have a bunch of makeup brushes that I use for small areas. I got, got them in various places on Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and use one of these eyeshadow ones and just try and dab in color there to fix my boo-boo. I mean, it's okay, but I'm still not happy with the pink bunny feet and the paper is, you know, worn away right there. So, yeah, maybe embellishments. <laughs> Try and blend that through a little bit. And say I kind of left my tree floating too. Well, that's okay. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and mount this to a piece of craft cardstock. And you'll see in a lot of my videos, craft cardstock is my favorite. I like it because it's recycled and it's, you know, rustic looking and stuff. See, I've got a little little piece of paper hanging off right there. It's just made me crazy. <laughs> Leave it alone. Leave it alone. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. And I'm just going to use my normal reptile adhesive that I use all the time. She's never let me down. Now I've tried multiple brands and they're all okay. But for whatever reason, I come right back to, to this one. Um, and I can see my bottle needs cleaning. But I'm going to just try and get enough glue on here to stick this thing down. Because I already know I'm going to do this over. I know I am because I just can't live with the little chunk out of it and the pink feet. But what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to grab my... I have a Posca pen that's roughly the same color. It's kind of off-white. And I think I'm going to try and cover that. Chianti ink with the Posca pen. We'll see. I mean, it works okay, but it's not the same shade, and it doesn't like to color that much over the um, over the bunnies. But I'm um, going to go ahead and just throw the embellishments on there now and see what I can do to kind of remedy that little chunk. And these are just some uh, honeybee stamps. Uh, they're 
they're called confetti. There's they're, they're sequins, basically they're cup sequins without a hole in it. And that was my wish come true because I never could stand sequins with a hole in it. It just bothered me. It didn't it I always felt it didn't belong. So what I like to do is just dab my glue on where I want to put them first, and I'm gonna do them in multiple sizes. And I want to make sure that the um, flat side is down. I've just got this little wax pencil. It was designed for doing, you know, nails, nail art. And I'm just going to grab some of these. And I'm not worried because the uh, reptile adhesive does dry clear. And I'm just going to lay down little embellishments here and there. And you can see that putting that one embellishment there basically made it stand out versus hiding it. So that's the thing. You can sometimes think, well, I'll just do an embellishment and fix it later. But sometimes it just points it out even more. But I'll go ahead and complete my embellishments on this. And I'm just putting them random. I'm not counting them or making sure they're in an odd number or anything. I'm just putting it where I think I might like it. And yeah, let's just be rebellious and break all the rules. Okay, there's one there. Should we make the cat Kathy Zilski sound? Ready? Boop. <laughs> She's so crazy. I just love her. <laughs> okay. Oh, a couple more. Then we'll be grabbing that Posca pen. That little container there, I got a bunch of them for a dollar at the Dollar uh, Dollar Tree store here in Huntsville. And, um, you know, I mean, sometimes you just got to, you know, prioritize where you're spending your money. I'd rather spend my money on ink and stamps. And anyways, those uh, are in the wedding section if you're looking and here's my Posca pen that is an off-white. Let's see if I can fix that. But you know what happens is the Chianti still bleeds through. And it's a little shade darker. So I know it's hard to see in the video, but it doesn't, I'm not happy with it. It's not, not doing it. Because I end up having a color in the whole bunny to make it match up. But... So I'm going to do that, and I'm just trying to blend there with my finger to see if that helps. And this, I mean, this does help some. It, you know, definitely improved the, the little pink parts there. But they bleed through once it starts to dry. So it would need several coats. And that's a lot of work, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, you maybe want to spend a lot of time doing a card, you know, if especially... For me, if I'm when I'm making a card for someone that I know, um, the one thing that I want people to know is that when I'm making this card for them, I'm thinking about them the whole time. So I'm basically with them, and that's how I feel about handmade crafts. I used to crochet, and uh, I mean that takes weeks, 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 and. I made things for my daughters-in-law and, and stuff like that and my blankets for my sons and, you know, my hair and my thoughts and my feelings and my prayers all went into every stitch. So it's the same way when I'm a creating a card and I'm thinking about you. Now, not to say I don't mass produce without anybody in mind, but you know, for my loved ones and for my friends, you know, I'm thinking about them when I'm making the card. So there it is anyway. And um, I'm going to live with my boo-boo and fix it later. And you'll see it from the beginning of the video. It looks a lot better. But still, I mean, this card is still really pretty. So I do want to thank you for coming in to visit us today and watching my video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and feel free to leave a comment or ask a question. Always happy to answer. Take care.